Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are all doing super, super well. So welcome to today's true crime video. Today we're going to be discussing the case of 17-year-old Itzel Espinosa. This case is crazy, you guys. This case kind of reminds me of the Leslie Palacio one, just because one of her killers is still on the loose and people believe that they may have run away to Mexico and are currently hiding there. So I'm hoping by creating this video and sharing it with you guys, we're able to share Itzel's story. We're able to have more eyes on this case and hopefully someone knows where one of her killers is hiding and they'll be able to bring this information to the police and finally get them behind bars where they belong. So this case just happened this month. It happened at the beginning of July so it's really really current. There's not that much information on it but you know I did my best to gather as much stuff as I could and the reason that I saw this case was because of TikTok. So yeah enough chit chatter you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you guys are new don't forget to subscribe down below please before you guys leave. If you guys enjoy true crime, you guys like makeup then definitely subscribe down below because because I do a mix of both. And yeah, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Let's just jump right into today's video. So Itzel Espinosa was 17 years old at the time of her passing. She was about to start senior year of high school at Darzart High School in El Mirage, Arizona. She was about to start this fall, you guys, and her 18th birthday was gonna be in September. So she lived with her father, Eduardo, and then she also lived with her stepmom, and I believe she had two other siblings, and she was really, really close to her dad. They had a really cute relationship. He definitely treated her like the princess of the family. He was definitely stern on her and very strict, but it's because he just really was looking out for her future. He wanted her to really focus on her studies, hang out with the right crowd, you know, just be like a good kid. So Itzel was a girly girl. She loved makeup, she loved hair, fashion, nails, she loved getting her eyelashes done, she loved shoes, she had like a huge shoe collection. She was just an overall girly girl which led to her starting an Instagram where she would post outfit photos, you know, like fashion inspo, and she was also trying to be a model. So she actually was really successful on social media. I think at the time she had around 60,000 followers or maybe more. And people around town really just knew her as like the influencer girl, just like very girly, loved makeup, fashion, all that stuff. So like I said, she was a girly girl and she really loved to act like a princess. She was treated as a princess by her family. But not like a spoiled way, like a bratty way where you're kind of just like, ugh, like you're so like spoiled. It was like a cute way, like that's just how she was. She wanted to like be a princess. So they went all out for her quinceanera, which if you guys don't know what a quinceanera is, it's basically when, it's basically like a sweet 16, but in Mexico we have it at 15. And it's basically you turning into like a woman, stuff like that, like you have like a huge dance and you have like a court which is called like chambelans and it's just like a whole thing so she went all out for her quinceanera it was like so big and glamorous and girly she had this beautiful red dress on she had like a tiara she had the whole chambelan thing and like everyone was just like oh my god like itzel skinses were really like she did that so she really got to live out her princess fantasy throughout her quinces so Itzel was really close to her father, Eduardo, but she was also really close to her grandmother, Elidia. I believe that's how you say her name. And her grandmother pretty much raised her because Itzel had lived in Chicago with her real birth mother until the age of two. And then once she was two years old, she went to live with her grandmother and her grandmother was basically like her mother in a sense like that's who raised her so she was really really close to her grandmother and to her father so at this time Itzel kind of started hanging around the wrong crowd and her dad did notice and was talking to her about it saying you know what I don't really like the crowd that you're hanging out with and at the time Itzel really didn't take it seriously she was kind of just like yeah like whatever you're overreacting which I'm sure we've all been there when we were teenagers, like not really listening to our parents. But Itzel's father was really like, no, I just did not like the crowd she was hanging out with. I got a bad vibe. I didn't think they were good kids. And he really, really pushed her because like I said, he was strict on her and he was stern. So he really pushed Itzel to find new friends and to stop hanging out with those people. But unfortunately, she continued to hang out with those friends. So the last time that Itzel's family spoke to her was on Thursday, July 1st. And she was talking to her dad and asked him for emotional support. She said that she really just needed support right now. She was kind of going through some stuff. And Itzel's dad was like, why? Why do you need emotional support right now? Like, you have your family here. You have friends in a way. Like, what's going on? And she didn't really go into detail about what was bothering her or why she needed emotional support and that's kind of where the conversation ended. So they had that conversation, they said goodnight to each other and then Itzel was planning on going out with her friends at night and Eduardo I'm sure thought she was going to come back by midnight 
or earlier than midnight, but he did not expect her to be out the entire night. Unfortunately, that was the last time Eduardo would ever see his daughter. So when Itzel did not come home Thursday night, he got really, really worried. He was just like, this is not like Itzel. If she was gonna stay out all night or if she was gonna sleep over with someone, he knew that he would get a call from her or a text being like, hey, I'm not gonna come home. I'm gonna have a sleepover or I'm going here afterwards, but he did not receive any communication from Itzel whatsoever, which he thought was really, really weird. So him and his wife started to get really concerned, so they decided to report her missing the following morning. Now, Eduardo and his wife weren't thinking the worst of the worst. They kind of thought the worst thing that could have happened was that maybe she got a DUI and she was in jail and that's why she wasn't able to communicate with them or she was just like hiding because she got a DUI and was scared to come home or something like that. Like, I'm sure they weren't thinking anything too crazy. So on Saturday, July 3rd at around 5.30 a.m., Phoenix police get a call from someone saying that they see a young girl sitting in the passenger seat of a car in an alley and appears to be unconscious and also appears to have been shot. So police quickly arrive to the scene and they are able to identify that the young girl sitting in the passenger seat of the car is 17-year-old Itzel Espinosa. So they immediately call Itzel's father because, like I said, he had reported her missing on Thursday, so police were already like on alert for her. So they immediately call Itzel's father, which I cannot even imagine how horrible that phone call must have been. Like the last time you saw your daughter was on Thursday. You haven't heard from her in two days. And the worst that you're thinking is maybe she got a DUI and then you get a call from the police saying that Isel has been shot and that she's in a random alleyway in a stranger's car. Like, I cannot even imagine how horrible that was. So my heart definitely goes out to Itzel's family because everyone's worst nightmare is receiving that call. So once Itzel's father heard the news, he was completely heartbroken. He did not understand how she even got there in the first place because this car was not Itzel's car. So whose car was it? How did she get in there? Why was she in this alleyway? And also, where has she been for the past two days? Like, what happened? So police immediately began to investigate. So while they were investigating, they had found a witness who said that that morning, she saw three people. She saw Itzel fighting with another girl, and then she saw a man standing near Itzel and the girl fighting, and that that man handed a gun to the girl, and that girl was the one that shot Itzel. Police were able to conclude that the man that handed the gun to the woman that shot Itzel was 19 year old Jesus Padilla. So two weeks later on July 16th, police were able to locate Jesus Padilla and were able to finally arrest him on suspicion of facilitation of murder. When they arrested him, they inspected the car that he was in and inside the car they found the hand that was used to kill Itzel. So they did say that this gun is not registered to Padilla, but they have not revealed who the gun is registered to. So once they brought Padilla in, they wanted to question him to see what happened. Like, does he know who the girl is that shot Itzel? Like, can he provide more clarity as to what went on that night and how Itzel ended up dead in a stranger's car? And he basically spilled the beans right away. He described exactly what happened. He named the other perpetrator and just admitted to everything. So on Saturday, July 3rd at around 5.15 a.m., Itzel and 18-year-old Lindsay Brianna Aguilar were at the alley of 35th and Southern Avenue. They were arguing with each other and were not really sure what they were arguing about. I mean, I don't know if police know what they were arguing about, but it's not been released or I couldn't find any details as to what the fight was about. So they were arguing with each other and the fight got really, really intense that it started to become physical. So at first it was just verbal fighting and then it turned into a really, really intense physical fight. So while Itzel and Lindsay were fighting, 19-year-old Jesus Padilla was standing nearby watching this whole thing go down. So he was just watching the girls fight and the fight got more intense. Like I said, it started to become really, really physical. So Itzel made a break from the fight and she started running away and she was trying to find a car to get into so that she could hide. So she was able to find an unlocked car. She quickly went in there. She went into the passenger seat of the car and she locked it. And this entire time, Lindsay was running after Itzel, chasing after her, telling her to get out of the car, to stop being a coward, to fight her. Like she was just being really, really aggressive. So when she found the car that Itzel was hiding in, she started banging on the car window, being like, get out of the car, like, come fight me, like, stop hiding, unlock the door. So she just kept trying to get Itzel to get out of the car, and that's when she turned to Jesus Padilla and asked him for a gun. So I'm not sure why Jesus gave her the gun, but he did have a gun hiding in his pants. So he handed it to Lindsay, and that's when Lindsay fired multiple shots in the car window and fatally shot Itzel. So after Lindsay shot Itzel, she gave the back to Jesus and they both left the scene and that was the end of that. 
So thankfully, police were able to find Jesus Padilla and he was arrested for first degree murder and his bail is set at $150,000. He has his first hearing scheduled for July 26th, so I guess we'll see what happens during that hearing. I'll keep you guys posted. So on Monday, July 19th, police arrested a 16 year old boy that is also suspected of being involved in this shooting. They haven't revealed his name because he is a minor, but he was booked into the Durango Juvenile Detention Center and they are charging him with abandonment of a body. So I'm not sure if maybe he just like witnessed the entire thing thing and didn't call police right away and that's why they're charging him with that but I'm not really sure what his involvement is in this shooting. So when police revealed to Eduardo that they had finally found at least two out of the three suspects involved with Itzel's passing, he was completely shocked that one of them was Jesus Padilla because a week before Itzel had passed away, she had posted Jesus on her story saying that he was like a brother to her, that they were really close friends. So he was just really confused. He's like, I mean, my daughter was just posting you last week, talking about how good of friends you are, how you're like a brother to her, and then you go and betray her this way. He was just really, really confused. So to this day, they have still not been able to locate Lindsay. A lot of people think that maybe Lindsay is in Mexico, like her family helped her get out of Arizona and crossed her over to Mexico. That's why I said it kind of reminded me of the Leslie Palacio case. I mean, I know the circumstances are different and the case is different, but in terms of like, you know, friends or people that you know betraying you and then one of the suspects is hiding in Mexico and is on the run, that's kind of like why it reminds me of that and it just makes me be like damn like you really can't trust anybody because the fact that he said trusted Jesus and called him her brother and said that they were really good friends and then he gave the weapon to this girl to sell like how horrible is that like it just it's just so crazy because people can just like turn on you in a second it just really opens your eyes up to like not trusting anyone too much which is sad that like we have to think that way but I mean so Itzel's father has faith that Lindsay will be caught, that someone will find out where she is in Mexico or someone will come forward to where she's hiding and she will be brought to justice because, I mean, he believes in karma and he knows that she's going to have to pay for her crime. So he does have faith that they will catch her eventually. He just really wants more details as to what happened that night. Like, where was she Thursday night and where was she all of Friday and what happened with this fight? Like, why did it get so intense that it started to be physical? Like, what could be so dramatic and so intense that you had to shoot someone over this fight like what could they possibly be talking about was it over a boy was it over like stupid teenager stuff like it really just bothers him that he doesn't have the full details as to what happened that night and why they were fighting so i did see some tiktoks of people saying that Lindsay said because she was jealous of her and that this was motivated by jealousy but i haven't really seen like police reports or like anything confirming that it was because she was jealous or that's what the fight was about but i have seen people talk about that and say that she was just jealous of her that she was jealous of her quince that she was jealous that she had all these instagram followers just like stupid stuff like it's just like really you're jealous of someone and you decide to murder them and you think that's gonna solve anything and that your life is gonna be better because the person you're jealous of is finally gone like it's just so stupid but like i said i don't know if this is like the actual reason as to why she killed itzel but that's like what a lot of people speculate is that it's because she was jealous of her so itzel's family is super heartbroken about this i mean they're just so upset that it just happened so suddenly and that they had tried to warn her about hanging out with this crowd and tried to get her to have new friends get her to you know hang with better people and drop this crowd that they just did not get good vibes from the dad kind of blames himself because he says that he should have pushed her harder even though he pushed her a lot like like i said he was really stern with her and very strict he tried to get her to get new friends and to drop these friends but he feels like he didn't do enough and that he could have pushed her more and if he had forced her to stop hanging out with these people or or forced her not to go out or you know put some type of more strict limits on her that this could have been prevented and he said would be alive today he shouldn't blame himself like it, he did the most that he could he tried to get her to have new friends he tried to talk to her but you know when you're a teenager i feel like sometimes you just don't listen to your parents no matter how good of advice they could be trying to give you or their intentions i just feel like you just don't want to listen to them so I feel like the family should definitely not put blame on themselves. Like they should put the blame on Jesus, on the 16 year old boy and on Lindsay because they're the ones that took Itzel's life. The family is just so sad that Itzel never got to, you know, get married. She was never able to have kids. She was never able to fulfill her dreams and her life was cut short for what? Like over a stupid fight that probably was over something not serious whatsoever like if you think about teenager fights they're so stupid and at the time they just seem like so serious and you just want to like 
I don't know, like prove your point. And then you think about it when you're older and you're just like, that fight in high school is so stupid and worthless. So, so it says father really wants to share her story and share this case with as many people as possible so that no other families go through this. He just wants kids to know that your parents are just have their best intentions out for you. Like they're not trying to ruin your life. They're not trying to destroy your friendships. They're not trying to control you. But if they feel like something is off and they feel like, you know what, this should be a limit or, you know, you shouldn't hang out with these people or you shouldn't stay out all night. It's for a reason. They're not doing it to be mean or to be annoying. Like they just want the best for you. So he just wants kids to know like your parents have good intentions, you know, listen to them. You're still able to go out, still able to have freedom, you know, hang out with friends, but there should be a limit of what you're able to do or how much freedom you should have. And he thinks that if people just like listen to their parents more and just have more communication that maybe things like this won't happen to other families. So yeah, you guys, that's pretty much all the information I have on this case. It's super fresh. Like I said, it happened a few weeks ago, so there isn't much detail, but I will definitely keep you guys posted because Jesus has his hearing on the 26th. So if anything comes out from that hearing, like more details about what the fight was about or anything like that, I will definitely keep you guys posted in the comment section here. If there is like a huge, huge update, I'll definitely make a part two video just so we can talk about it more and like give us more details. But that's pretty much all the information I have on this case now. So Lindsay is still on the run she still is out there somewhere I mean I'm assuming she's probably in Mexico as well I just feel like that's the thing that people do when you commit a crime you try to run to Mexico because you think you'll never get caught I'm hoping she is caught soon like I have faith like I'm just like manifesting it that she's gonna get caught and she'll be behind bars and you know hopefully be in jail for the rest of her life because she just committed something so gruesome and disgusting for no reason like there was just no reason to take away Itzel's life so if you guys have any information about this case or you may know where Lindsay is or you know someone that may know something you know just any type of viable tip I highly encourage you guys to call the Phoenix Police Department or you can call the silent witness which means that you will be anonymous so no one will ever find out that you gave a tip on this case so you'll be completely anonymous so if you do have any tips and you wanted to be at the silent witness you can call 480 witness and yeah you guys my heart goes out to says family like it's just so heartbreaking that her life had to be cut short and I really hope you guys have justice soon and find peace and I hope it says story does bring awareness to other families about you know who your kids hang out with what type of crowd they're around you know just things like that that hopefully can you know make sure that other families don't have to go through this let's just pray and keep our fingers crossed that Lindsay gets caught soon and she goes behind bars so yeah that's pretty much all I have to say about this case like I said if you guys have any information or any opinions or you know whatever about this case definitely leave them in the comments down below if there are any other cases you guys want me to cover in the future also let me know in the comments down below so I can add it to my list and yeah thank you guys so much for watching today's video don't forget to subscribe before you guys leave and give this video a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!